Today, I'm going to be revisiting a painting I did recently as a demo. And while I'm actually painting the same painting I did here, there are going to be a couple of key differences. What we have is essentially an architectural scene with a figurative subject added. That's going to basically be the same. However, I'm going to do two things new. One, I'm going to concentrate on the figurative subject as the center of focus a little bit more, and I'm also going to be adding a lot more value to give a little bit more depth into the painting, a little, a little bit more drama, I think. So what I've done is basically, to, for starters, is to revisit my photos, my photo reference materials, work out a little bit more stuff in Photoshop to kind of help me make some decisions. I'll talk about those decisions a little bit more as I'm painting. And I also worked up a little study that I want to show you uh, in regards to the figure. So aside from being a little larger, the delivery man uh, in the painting, I've decided to do a test painting him two different ways. Here, you can see the versions I painted, one using uh, high contrast neutral tones, and the second one also with high contrast but using complementary colors uh, with strong saturation. I'll decide which version I want to use when I get to him near the end of the painting. For this version, I'm going to be using complementary colors along with maintaining a high contrast and strong saturation. Um, the colors I'm going to be using are a warm yellow along with an ultraviolet for the pants, I'm mixed with a little bit of sepia for some of the darks. For the arms and head, I'll still be using uh, quinacridone rust and the azo orange that I used for the first painting.
So for starters, let me show you the in greater detail the photo that we're going to be working from. Um, this photo here shows a lot more of the detail. Uh, I have another photo which shows more of the value, um, a black and white for some gray scale reference. But here we can pretty much see all the detail that we're going to be working with. Um, we might not implicitly paint all of this, but it's there and as we paint we can make some additional decisions. Um, classic one point perspective with one figure in it. Uh, this gentleman is delivering a, uh, pack a couple packages of food to the butcher, uh, Carniceria. This is a, uh, a scene in Havana, so that uh, gives it some, some real nice architectural interest. We have a lot of features here, um, lots of highlights on the facade, lots of interesting drop shadow and cast shadows. We're going to add some more shadow here uh, to the drawing, which I'll show you now. As we pull away, uh, we can see the, this is a 16 by 12 and a half inch size painting when we're done with it. And we can pretty much see how uh, everything's set up here. This is, we're painting on 300 pound Saunders Waterford cold press paper. Um, it's the paper I normally paint on. Sometimes I'll paint on 140 pound paper. Uh, maybe in the classroom or for certain exercises. Today I decided to go with the uh, natural white 300 pound paper. Uh, I've got my palette set up here ready to go, cleaned up the arena as I like to call it with um, plenty of paints that I moist, moisten, um, you know, reinvigorate with some water. Uh, several different brands that I like to, to, to paint with including Winsor Newton, M. Graham, uh, Holbein, uh, Stephen Quiller, a lot that I like to mix with over the years. Uh, primarily, primarily, I'd say uh, Windsor Newton is, is, has been my primary brand over the years. So, um, so we have that. I'll talk a little bit more about the brushes that I'm going to be using throughout. Um, synthetic blends of rounds, uh, some flats that I'll probably be dropping in some shadows with, but mostly rounds. So I'll talk a little bit more about those as we paint. Um, let's see what else. I, I like to use a number, let's see what, an F pencil to do my drawing on here. Um, it's not too soft, whereas I'll, I'll smudge any of the, uh, the graphite as I'm painting. Uh, but it is dark enough, it's not too hard. Uh, because I like to work in multiple layers. Uh, I like to still be able to see the pencil line uh, as I'm painting. So, with that in mind, let's see, we're about ready to start laying down some color here and get going with this. Okay, so for starters, I'm going to start blocking in some of the shadowed area on the back wall of this. And what I've done is I've put together a mixture of cerulean blue and sepia that I want to start blocking in some of the structure with. Uh, working wet on the dry here, some water so I can still see my pencil line underneath. I do realize I may come back into some of this. with some more color afterwards. Be careful as I... There's some, some, some fence work, some iron work here that's much darker, so I'll be painting over that, so I'm not too worried about that. Covering that up right now. I want to be careful. I'm starting with a round brush here. Watch my figure. I'm also taking note that my sepia, the two pigments I'm using, my sepia and my uh, cerulean, aren't perfectly mixed, which is okay. I want to do show some variants of the, the, the colors back here 
Remember, this is going to be considerably darker when we finish with it, so... Sometimes the thing I like about starting off with a smaller brush is I might leave little, little areas of white, uh, which I may or may not cover up later on. Sometimes that adds additional movement or uh, sometimes referred to as sparkle of the painting. Support for the rafters up there. Back wall and side column. I'm going to paint around the sign. zoom in on this I, I realize that the, the lights of the uh, you know my s situation here might show some a little too much glare don't worry I'll be zooming in on this in various portions of the painting uh, to get different looks back wall here there's some additional architectural elements I don't want to completely paint over just yet. We're going to go to the other side of the column here and fill in some more, some more area. I have this painting taped, uh, just some, some basic uh, artist, no, well, cheap drafting tape, but it holds it pretty well to this uh, half inch uh, foam core for support. back here and drop in a value over that. And I'll come down to here which is the top of this wall. There's a ledge here that actually is a different color. I'll introduce a new color with that. We're just blocking in the main areas here right now. Okay, after a little bit of time here, um, I've zoomed in on this. Uh, my background has dried, uh, the blue and the, the sepia, and you can get a little better sense for the, the tone and, and, and just, just, just where we're at here. Uh, my pencil lines are still showing through there very well. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now, and I'm gonna address the bottom a little bit more. Uh, down over here, to the lower left some of the shadow area back here which is pretty going to be pretty dark uh, as i continue to go ahead and block in some some more of the uh, larger shapes here so let's try that. got spray bottles over here keep things moist i've got a little bit more let's see lower part of the wall here, the column, it's going to be some of the, the blue and some of the brown. It's considerably darker back here. I'm not going to keep it too dark just yet. I want to keep some of my shapes a little more recognizable. Okay, there's a ledge here. Around the figure. My cone, the base of the cone. I want to. You know, lots of chip paint, lots of. Oh, lots of chipped everything here. So, I'm going to block this in. Careful. I'm 
We should show you what I'm going to add a little more here. This up so you can see. Okay, actually, this ledge here is actually a different structure. So I'm going to, it's going to go to a little more sepia. Gonna add a touch of Payne's Gray into that. Um, Windsor Newton Payne's Gray. It's got a little more blue in it, but it's a little different blue, a little cooler blue than the uh, cerulean. So use a little more water here. We're down in the into the corner of the painting anyway. I don't necessarily need lots of tons of hard edges down here and lots of attention brought to it. So, but nonetheless. A little bit of cast shadow from the left from outside of the painting coming into it. Okay, that. Now, the ground, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the ground right now. Um, a little warmer with the sunlight coming in from, from the left over here. Uh, there is some pretty high contrast, a lot of earth tones, a lot of things going on. Um, this is a number eight round brush. I'm actually going to move to a larger round brush for that. <clears throat> Here we go. I think we're up to a 12 here. What I want to do is start, I want to bring out some some raw sienna. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a warm tone on the base of this ground here, bring some of it in here, but then drop in lots more dark tones back here. So let's raw sienna. Use a fair amount of water back here. Light. Drop in a little more pigment there. There we go. Okay. Hard edge with the shadows. This post that runs up right through the middle of the composition almost looks like it's supposed to support the whole second balcony, but trust me, it doesn't. It's far from that, but. It is somewhat dramatic. I do like it. I'm going to follow along my shadow here. Runs up to this wall. Be careful here. You know what? Let's leave. Let's leave this a little bit lighter. I think I'm going to want this lighter. There we go. Because that's. I'll put a little tone in there, but I think, you know, I like to keep my whites first and then make decisions later about full coverage with something like that. So I'm going to play it safe and take that out right now. Okay. And let's bring... Let's cover this, the bottom of the pedestal that's holding up the column, that'll get darker too. So let's go ahead and drop in the yellow base here. I'm going to add a little touch of, let's see, a little, um, little quinacrylone rust to my yellow. Actually, I'm going to bring in some yellow ochre. A little bit lighter. Put some of the ground in here. But I'm going to do a much drier application because the harsh sunlight. And actually, you know, in, in these instances, sometimes it's nice to, to, to leave some white. There's going to be whites on the columns. 
uh, some in the rest of the facade. It, it It's nice relief actually for what else is going on in here. All the intense color and, and you know and shadows, you know, all the, all the drama that's going on here, some of the whites are a nice relief. Remember to always leave. If you're not certain about it, if you're a little unsure, Leave the whites because you can always cover them later. Come back. You know, we plan as much as we can. As I, I want to drop in some, some sepia darker tones back here. Again, I'll pull out. Uh, and when you see this dry, when the water evaporates, you'll see this dry. And just like up here, You'll, it's, it's going to be considerably lighter. You know, lots of painting. After lots of painting, you just, you just know, it becomes more intuitive that that's going to happen. So, have a little confidence. The side of the wall, again, I'm, I'll pull back in a nice cerulean blue color. soften those edges. Shaping up. Get more darker tones going back here. This is already drying back here quite a bit. I'm going to paint around the base of the column. And as my shadow comes forward, Make it a little more transparent. Now I can tell just looking at this, it's it is more transparent than what I have going on in the back, just because the the lights right now darken it considerably. Um, you know what I'm going to add. A little, little ultraviolet back there. Actually, I think a little purple back, tone back here. Sort of a cool, cool dark because I don't want I don't want the earth tone to just kind of kill everything. I want a little additional color in there besides just these earth tones that I got back there. Even in the darkest areas. You know, dioxazine purple, that's what this color is called. And it, it's really nice, Mix mixes in with a lot of, well, a lot of different pigments to give you a real rich dark. Some people pick up, some painters pick up on this a lot quicker than others, but boy, you know, when you put some nice rich darks into your shadows, it just brings them to life so much more it's 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 as they would say about shadows it's night and day it really is you know this isn't hyper realism that we're dealing with it's 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 realism, it's representational painting. But when we start to get blooms, little bits of runbacks into certain areas, you know, this is this is old architecture we're talking about, you know, real old stuff. I mean, the, 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 the chipping and the crumbling that's going on, it's amazing. I'll tell you what, this building is not standing uh, anymore. I, I took these original pictures uh, probably over a dozen years ago. And uh, the last time I was, down here was two years ago, and this building's long gone. Okay, so you know, what I'm gonna do take a smaller brush. I'm gonna go ahead while, I'm, while I got some purples and browns mixed up here. I'm gonna do his cast shadow. One part I'm going to do, even though I'm going to save the rest of him for last, 
So I'm on the ground here. I'm going to do a little bit of scraping, take advantage of my cold press paper with the tooth. Now, realistically, this whole shadow should be hard. And uh, from other pictures that I've had, some cast shadows from trees, of course, they're going to be soft. But I'm going to take a little license here, play with it a little bit more, and give it a little more movement, a little more interest. Remembering, it is close to some of the other shadows here, too, which are pretty hard. So we, don't, we don't want it to be too different. Let's see how that looks. See, this is an area, you know, there's certain areas you've got to realize that, well, I can come back into it and change it later if I don't like it. So, let's see, let's see how we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah, you can see some of the some of the mix of pigments showing through a little bit more. As these lighten up, I might, you know, I might wind up going over it again depending on the overall contrast of this, but that's where we're at right now. So, I'm not going to fuss with it anymore right now. Here we go. Bring this down. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a couple some values here, background here, and background over here. Let's let's fill those in. Um, again, some cerulean and sepia coming into here. This is actually a this, this, this section of the wall has been painted over, so I'm going to keep it lighter. I know it's white back there, but there's no way you see it as white. So I'm just going to carefully drop in a light to medium value back here for now. Same with on the other side. One background here. Let's fill this in. On the right side of the column. I can even reach for my purple again. Values back here can considerably darker. And when we look to the background for, for this type of thing, I'm, I'm looking at shapes, contrasts, making sure my contrasts are, are light back there. And in some other areas, the contrast will be considerably darker. But let's see here. This section of the wall. It's a lighter earth tone. Plop that in. We're back on the ground here. There's going to be cast shadow and some more of this tone. Not much. I'll actually just get to go right to the filling in the cast shadow now. To the right of the column. There's not much over here. Let's fill that in. There's some weeds. I know that. I'll just kind of paint around those a little bit real quick. Um, let's see what we got here. 
Okay. More shadows back here. And now, <clears throat> this section back here is actually quite dark. I'm going to go ahead, since, since what I painted here is dry, I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. dark. I'm putting a dry, actually bringing in a little um, ultramarine back here. There we go. I've got a window back here that um, I still want to maintain so I'm going to Careful how I. This will lighten up, and I'll still see my pencil lines back there. I, it's, it's hard to see right here, but I can see them back there, and I'll fill those in a little bit later. So let's see. We've got we've got another shadow here. Let's get you off from this wood post. I'm gonna put that in. Before I forget it. And then across the top of the ledge. There we are. Okay. Next thing to do, fill in some of the background here. Uh, doorway. This is actually sort of a, um, a counter area back here. We're going to keep that pretty abstract. We're not going to, you know, there's actually, I think there's a, uh, a scale back there. And, um, you know, where you, where you go behind this counter. Uh, this is sort of a, a red uh, corrugated, uh, well, I guess at one time it might have been a, a gate that comes down, but I don't think it is anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and just, I'm going to, for the sake of changing color back here, I'm going to add some maroon perylene to this. This is a wonderful earth tone red that I can make actually quite quite saturated, quite rich when I want to. And if I don't like it, again I can just darken it up, but for right now, keeping it fairly intense. Plus I know it's gonna dry, you know, it's gonna lighten up considerably after water evaporates. Suggest some horizontals in here. Wood post. It's pretty light. Be careful with that. Okay. What I'm going to do is, let's see. There's some, some grading back here. I'm going to use a smaller brush and take a little time with that and fill that in. And my sign, you know, as far as signs goes, I will fill in the lettering um, and I'm going to make it partially readable. That's not going to be necessarily the center of focus. Our eyes always go to that. Uh, but I don't necessarily want you to be spending a lot of time reading that. But uh, that will be, you know, that will be recognizable as a sign. You know, uh, the lettering, some of that will be recognizable, but I'm going to try and break some of that up. So let's, um, let's see here. So I've basically done here is fill in a lot of the detail and area around the sign. Uh, it's rather time consuming, of course, but <clears throat> it's detail and uh, there's a lot of detail, but it's pretty, pretty crucial. Uh, because even though what I've decided to do is uh, I filled in, as you can see, the lettering on the sign, and I'm going to go a lot more high contrast with it. Because once I'm done filling in a lot of this detail, there's some signage back here, uh, there's a little detail behind the counter, some lights back here, I'm eventually going to be dropping in a lot more darks back here uh, to bring the facade, you know, 
even closer. So what I want to do is make sure that these details back here show through once I paint over them with my darker values. So right now I'm filling in using a little reddish purple color back here. Um, my Perlene Maroon, my Dioxine Purple. Filling in behind the, the fencing, the grating that's back here, the gate that's in front of the, what I think is the counter. Looks like this structure has gone through much, all kinds of different usage over the years. So I'm just filling in these areas with my number four round. These whites, this, this pattern, I'll put uh, some more red over that. There aren't going to be any whites back there at the end of the day. Okay. This is the edge of the counter. We're going to have some light back here, a little bit, just a little bit. I want to be careful with some of these details because I don't want to lose anything. If I decide later, if I leave some whites and decide later to paint over them, I've at least given myself that option. If I had a lot more uh, going on back here where I needed a lot of, a lot of like wiring or intricate details, yeah, then at that point I'd probably break out the, um, you know, the masking fluid and uh, start working with that a little bit more. Uh, I try not to use it. I like the, I like the my edge control. To, uh, I like to give it a little bit more variance with the edges. Uh, the masking fluid, a lot of times your, ed your, your sharp edges are similar. Every edge is the same. Um, I like to control my edges a little bit more with some water, soften them up where I want to. Um, but there's definitely times when you, when you need it. So, Okay, so good there. I'm going to do I'm just adding some additional detail back here. How much of this will show through depends on just how dark I make my final wash over that. I'll try to retain some of the details. Back here, there's some green, actually, that I'm going to fill in. It's nice in certain spots to be able to introduce a, a unique color.
or a small hint of it. This back here is a doorway that leads to the to the rear. Careful, watch them around my post. This, it's good to paint now. I mean, I might wind up covering some of it, but you know, I, I want as I'm painting later, dropping in my darker value. I might, you know, I might want more of it to show than my initial plan. Okay. Come so, top. Mixing a little purple and sepia bit for the for the real darks back here. Much more higher contrast. Okay, now I'll just take my flat brush and my red and take out these whites. Here, be a little more careful. Let that dry a little bit more. Okay. I'm just gonna throw a, a, a blue back here just to get rid of the white. Suggest a color lightly back there. I'll wait till this dries. So what I'll do is while this is drying, I'm going to fill in this over here. Use a I'm going to go to my number 10 round brush. A little bit of yellow ochre. A little warm yellow, suggesting a little warmth, which is going to contrast even more with the shadow that's going to come in here. 
again painting around my main columns. These guys are going to be, well, pretty much white. So, let's see, the underside of... This here, it's going to be up here. Actually, over here, it's fairly light. There's 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 just a little bit of, of warmth back here, but again, it's what it's going to do is suggest the 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 structure of this arch back here. It's at the edge of the painting. Not going to get too highly uh, detailed with it. Just suggest the basic shapes. There we go. The arch. Okay, it's going to be some more warm tones coming in some of the chipped paint back here. So I'll fill those in now so I don't cover those up later. Some of the crumbling facade and some of the wood that's up here is going to get a lot of the warm treatment also. Heck, I might even add a little of my Azo orange in there. It's going to be a nice contrast at the end, or that's the hope anyway, right? Between a lot of the cools that are going to be here, uh, some of these warm tones, and then of course the, the, well, almost white, practically white facade. So, let's see. Let's drop a little stronger yellow on that. Let me, let's, let's zoom in on this a little bit just so I can show you. See where I'm at, still blocking in a lot of these these shapes. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll jump into some, some details just so I don't forget and knowing what I'm going to uh, be doing in the future. I mean, because this is such a crucial area with a lot of darks that are eventually going to go over it, I want to pull out a few details like in the sign and the, the, the fence work here so I don't lose it. Okay. Harsh sunlight continuing to work wet onto dry. Okay, now I know back here, the underside, well, the ceiling, the rafters almost, uh, there's going to be some cool tones covering up some warm tones. So I'm going to, right now, I'll look a little wetter. Gonna mix some yellows, some greens, some blues. I'll paint in some of these these some of the wood. Just blocking in now. It's it's all gonna get pretty dark. Rust a little bit. You can use a little burnt, a little burnt sienna. This is okay. Burnt sienna is great, and it's another. It's a, It's another color that. Yeah, it really <clears throat> changes depending on the brand. Um, Holbein burnt sienna right here. Not not too muddy. It's still pretty strong. Okay. Let's dry back 
here. Going behind this arch. Sepia. Starting to follow along the structure of the wood planks. Also taking advantage of the cold press surface, dragging the uh, the brush across the surface. Uh, great for for all kinds of textures, uh, especially with wood. Start putting some darker values and detail back here to push this post forward. While we're at it, I'm going to take a little bit of purple to find the side of that post. signage that's down there. It's got a little, little bit of blue. A warm tone on the wall. Back here, there we go. And there's some over here. my smaller number four, start defining the tops of the columns a little bit. Cerulean blue, a little bit of sepia. Try to follow along with my line work and my shadows. And I'll come back to these and define them a little bit more after I drop in the shadow here because then I can decide just how much more detail I want in these guys. Keep the water in for some transparency. <clears throat> a lot more going on back here with some darks. I'll, I'll get into that in just a minute. Let's, let's get to fill in some of this. Okay. Back here. Let's go around the top of the column. And some blues down here. Some lighter 
value here. I want to keep some water on that. Starting to define the column a little bit more. round brush down here a little cerulean and a little sepia tones to I want this edge to be broken up a little bit more here color in a couple spots. It's pretty washed out, but we do want a little, a little bit more. There we go. Let's soften these edges up here. Just a little more water. Because it's a, it's a cylinder, basically, so I don't want... It. There's no hard shadow going right across it, so this is, this is a painted portion of it down here different so we're just going to break up those edges there on the column. What's happening is that this column is actually attached to a uh, sort of a rectangular pillar right behind it. That's the structure of it. Okay and again uh, after these darks are here I might decide to pull out even more details back here so let's continue on. Uh, there's a window back here. I mean, Peeling paint and peeling plaster everywhere. But mix up your brush strokes. Don't go all in the same direction. Down here, strengthen the shadow a little bit more. 
There's some green weeds in front of this. Let's see. Yeah, the sunlight's pretty strong. I should say. I'll start to move over to this side now. Okay. Starting left to right, I'm going to start filling in some more of my darks here. Some of these darks are going to help define some of my larger shapes. I'm using a uh, little sepia mixture of little ultramarine drop in here just so it's not one uh, one pigment then that defines the dark. I'm using a medium sized round brush here, but it's got a nice tip on it, so I don't have to go to my smaller brush just yet. For some of these other darks here. Okay. We have raw sienna. some lighter values here. There we go. That's all I want. Well, I'm down here. I'm going to go ahead and drop in some darker shadow work. Let me start wood on to dry and then I'll drop in some more uh, some more water to soften some of these Soften some of the edges in the shadow areas here. Using combination of raw sienna and sepia. Some of our tones just, you know, there's still some pencil lines that are showing through, and I can go back in here and pull out a few lines if I wanted. But we're 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 in the corner of the painting down here. It's not. You know, it's not nearly as important. I'll define some of it, though. I will define some of it. Okay. Edge. Back here. A 
again, this is the area that I'll be dropping in a lot more darker values, but I just still want to define a few shapes back here, real loose. Okay, the bottom of the column. Here we had the bottom of the column where it started to turn, get a little darker down here. And it's, it's cylindrical shape. Now I'm gonna get out a little bit more surly in here. We've got the left side of this front column. Some of it's going to be a little stronger. Now, take advantage of more, soften up some of the edges. Peeling plaster and paint. And the other thing too, I always want to add in little shots of color so we don't have one long uh, strip of just the same color. I'm trying to break it up in a couple spots too. Definitely creates a little more interest. Now for the top of the column, I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of ultramarine and sepia for the details. medium and very dark values here. Back on the left side here, it's going to go a little bit lower. And start putting my fence that's back here. Back to my 
larger round. Blocked in. Fill in the signs back here. There's a value that goes over this post. I'll deal with the details on this post later after I drop in my dark values back here. Okay. Let's finish up back over here. Pretty dark back there. There were some, I'll carry over some of the greens that I had over here. near the top, I'm going to just put in a few details up there and some of the architecture. We've got, let's see, some of the architectural molding that's up here. Now, it's quite detailed up here, as, you, as you'll see in the photo. Um, I'm not going to be filling that in. That's way at the top. I'll indicate some of that rather loosely. It's, 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 it's too far away from the center for me to, center of focus for me to really concentrate on. That's not my objective here. Blocking some of that in the medium value. Additional line work. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish off the top of the column up here. So the stuff that's in shadow.
this may appear very dark at first, but it's also going to be much darker down here. So, If I was a little hesitant about that, I would make it medium value and come back into it with darks later, but I know this is going to be very dark. So, just to show you, kind of go in on this a little bit. A lot of shapes blocked in here uh, with some medium and a few dark uh, values, a few light values on the facade. I'm going to keep those right now. I'm not going to bother with those anymore until I need to pull out a few details in here. And then last, of course, but not least, our, uh, our delivery man. So, I'm going to go ahead and start dropping in my dark, dark values right now. Okay, at this point I'm going to go ahead and drop in a dark value back here. Um, mixture of sepia, a little bit of Payne's gray, and what I want to do is to really uh, uh, create the, well, the depth of the painting. Really bring this area to the back uh, but not completely. We're still going to be able to see some of these details. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work, actually with this, I'm going to go ahead and work a wet on wet. I'll put down, uh, I brought out my number one flat brush for this. I'm going to drop down some clear water uh, through, the, through the roof here, the sign, the back, with the exception of the window area and the walkthrough around the counter, uh, through the shadow and the left side of the pillar and the ledge. Um, I'll be careful to paint around my post. I'll be dropping in some water around the signage here and on the back wall. So, let's grab some clean water. Uh, before I do this, actually, I want to build up a little bit more pigment ready to go here. I've got some sepia, got plenty of Payne's gray over here ready to go also. I don't want to spend too much time having to go to my tubes of paint. I'm going to put this out onto my arena. This is a ceramic palette, by the way, which I really like. Um, yeah, I have other palettes, smaller ones that I you know, travel with and what have you, but uh, a nice heavy uh, ceramic palette like this is, is beautiful because it's got a nice large area for mixing color. How you arrange your colors and your palette, really there's no right or wrong. Um, you know, I. I you know, warms, cools, if you like to have, do it by color, by, you know, anybody's color theory. Doesn't matter. The more you paint, you'll wind up changing out a lot of these colors anyway. I've changed out a lot of my colors, uh, not just with different brands, but just um, move colors around a little bit more. You find out what colors you, you know, you gravitate towards. And you wind up moving stuff around. It evolves over the years, just like your painting. Okay, so let's get my clean water here. There we go. I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna cover up the facade. Counter. His immediate right through the shadow. If this were a much larger painting, I'd probably be working in stages, separate stages, maybe even with again with masking fluid. We'll go above these signs here to the right of the post through the roof, under the facade. Right now I'm going to go around the top of the column. Now there is a shadow back here that I want to cover. And this back wall above the ledge to the left of the column. Okay, let's 
tilt this, make sure I got the coverage I want, and look at reflections, right, dry spots. Right, I should be ready to go. Here. Right up to the edge of the post, floor. I'll take care of this little shadow area here later. That's a small area that I can cover in later. Not too worried about that. Okay. Got a dark value. Get some, even load that up with more water. This is at about a 20 degree, well, about a 15, 20 degree tilt. Water will flow down a little bit. I can always move this more to get more action if I want. Here we go. the water here. Not all areas are going to be as saturated. I'm going to drop in pigment, brush where I need to. I'm going to let some of the water do some of the work here. Pretty quick. There we go. Put the top under the facade. Top of the column. Walk back there. Now, using the tip of the brush, we can define some shapes a little bit more. But wet on wet, so they're a little softer back there. Depending on how much definition you want back here, wait for the water to just dry a little bit more and then go in while it's still wet. down here I can just move this around a little bit brush a little move that back into the scene a little bit more
Watch the edges around him. He's pretty crucial, of course. There. sign there. actually I'm gonna take my towel and soak up a little bit of this down here just keep an eye on that dark behind the post makes the post pop forward a little bit more okay knowing how much this is going to lighten up eventually okay actually this should be covered right up here there we go What's going to happen too is as this lightens up, some of my pencil lines will show through again and I can pull out some more details if I choose to do so. Now just to reassure you towards the end of this, uh, when this is completed, what I'll do is uh, I'll have this up on my easel. The lighting will be a little less harsh than what I have here. Uh, as this lightens up, you'll be able to see a lot more with the detail. So let's let this dry a little bit. Um, you know what? Actually, let's go ahead. Since we're going to go into drying mode, let's drop in the darks over here. Now, there's not as many as much area to cover. So I'm going to paint it rather quickly using a lot of water going wet out to dry. Force the shadow over here a little bit more. Okay. And bring a dark down here. There we go. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and let this dry a little bit. See where we're at in a few minutes. Okay, we've got some darks uh, in here where I want them. This is dried up pretty good. I'm going to lay in a little bit more color over some of these right now, just to make it pop a little bit more and a little bit of color um, here into the roof section. I've got my cerulean blue. It's still going to stay pretty dark. I just want to Pull a little more color into that, make the make some of the shadow just a little bit richer. So there we go. Realizing that uh, under the lights here, let's uh, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Get a little better. Of course, I know that will lighten up considerably once I once once it dries. Let's see what we got here. Okay. The opaque nature that the cerulean has does 
help with this. Soften up a few edges. There. Okay. And I want to reinforce a little bit of the structure up here. Reinforce, more like redefine. You've got some plenty of interesting detail that can be pulled out. Um, things like wiring, additional chipped paint. Start to look at other details, some of this signage. unreadable but I want it that way mm -hmm. or an additional values back here because I'm gonna to get to work on this post next and push that forward so that basically slats of wood go to a few different neutral tones here 
some burnt umber, a little bit of sepia. Try to be careful with some of these guys. Remember, although detail helps bring out some of bring some of this forward, we have to retain the lights because it provides all that contrast. So contrast, details, warmth. Earlier I said I was going to add additional value to this shadow here, and I'm going to do that now. I just want to back out and show you what I'm doing. Sorry. The ground. Shots of color there. Okay. Now, what I want to do. is to just finish up some of the details on the facade, bringing all the way down here to the foreground, and then I'll be ready to paint our friend, Mr. Delivery Man. Okay, so for final details on the facade, what I want to do is start at the top and work my way down, both the columns on the left and the column on the right. So what I'm going to do is work up a medium to dark gray to address a little bit of the uh, of the release relief sculpture that's up here uh, although not too much matter of fact I didn't even draw it in completely just because it's rather busy and I don't want there to be too much focus up there so I'm just going to lightly suggest it color down into here now the base near the base this just gives a little more interest and weight to the columns themselves okay. let's go ahead and a little greenery Little little hit of, of color that isn't necessarily in the rest of the painting. We'll kind of move it around a little bit. The ground.
Now I can go back in and redefine a little bit more of some of the, some of the plaster, some of the structure. So, with these buildings, there's a lot of, a lot of <laughs> wiring just all over the place. It just seems like it's almost part of the landscape. So we're going to add some of that in. Now I'm just using my number four brush for this. You can certainly use a, a liner brush depending on how much how much you really want to put in here. Let's, let's just touch this back up, up here a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that's fine for now. Um, I want to I want to start addressing him before I make any final decisions on, on, on the rest of this. And in regards to him, the delivery man, talked about this earlier. Basically I worked up two different versions of him. Um, just to just to just to play with a little bit more. See what I can do. Um, I like, you know, for starters, I work on a version that where I used a little bit more neutral color, uh, neutral tones. Uh, I kept the high contrast, but I was using some Prussian blue, a little bit of Payne's gray with sepia, and uh, kept his, his shirt white, made some color into the pants. Um, thought, okay, that's a little, that's a little subtle. Let's try something a little more, a little more dramatic. So I went with complementary colors of yellow, purple. Um, made the saturation strong, uh, kept the high contrasts, uh, especially in his shirt, and I think I'm going to go with that. I think that's going to give a little bit more focus to him, uh, and I think make it a bit more interesting. Um, I was using a warm yellow on his shirt, an ultraviolet in his pants, with a little bit of sepia for the darks, and also his hat. And for the arms, stick with my Hazel Orange and Quinacridone Rust. So let's go ahead with him. Put this off to the side. Let me move this up a little bit. Let's get back out. And we'll get going on him. All right, let's get going with the delivery man himself. Let's, uh, let's, let's um, get his yellow shirt going. I've got, uh, we're gonna give him the warm yellow shirt. This is actually a, um, a Hansa Yellow Deep, an M. Graham color that I happen to like a lot. Get out a number six round for this. We're going to go to the Violet Deep. There's pants. This is actually Ultramarine Violet, to be a little more correct.
painting went on to dry, I know I can paint quick enough where I, if I need to soften up some edges, I can come back in here with some water to do that. I'm going to do my number four brush here. I'm going to put in his shoes. I'm just going to give him some dark sepia brown shoes. Okay. Force a few edges here. Contrasts. Heels. This goes right into the shadows. Okay. Let's see. A few more darker darks. A couple of key spots. Lots of folds in the pants. Let's go ahead and address his arms. Just gonna right now block in with the Azo Orange. The Azo Orange, um, another M. Graham color. It's a, it's, it's a real nice strong orange. I like it. Uh, kind of replaced my cadmium orange. Just because I happened to get some and liked it and stayed with it. So, let's... Here. Leave a few highlights on his left arm here. Back of his neck and ear. And of course, the top of his hand. Give that a little dry time. Uh, I'm going to give him a violet cap. Match the pants a little more. There we go. Give them a little more of a uniform look. There we go. Right. The boxes he's carrying. Um, a little bit. You know, actually, I'm gonna kind of knock that top down a little, just a little bit, just add a little bit of glossy on to my yellow. Fill in the, refine these a little bit more. Carrying two boxes. Using a little sepia now. Let's go ahead, darken behind this cap. Now we can take a um, little bit, little, little, little of my uh, quinacrylone rust here. Get an additional darker color to his flesh tones. I may even add some sepia into that. Yeah, 
Let's get a little sepia for some of the shadow. Okay. Smooth that out a little bit. This isn't shadow. It's forearm going right up above his bicep. There we go. He's got to have some more dimension. And just why not? Since I still have a little bit of my cerulean out here. Little design on the boxes. Okay, I think we're at a point where we want to step back and take a look at this, make any final decisions we need to. I'm going to define these boxes just a little bit more. There. Let's get a value on the back of these. dimension there. Okay. So as we pull out a little bit, bring him down. There we are. We've got everything in here planned uh, as as I had hoped. With darks back here, but yet some strong colors. I'm gonna I'm gonna set this up, change the lighting a little bit for you in, in just a second. And you can see, as you squint at this, the, the, the depth that, that that we've created here, while still maintaining some of the detail. Yeah, you can really go crazy with some of this detail, can't you? I mean, it's 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 there for you. It's what we love. But I'll save that for the final painting. So let's. Let's let's just look at this some more and I think I think we're pretty happy with it. So pretty much um, wrapping up here, I pretty much accomplished what I wanted to, what I set out to do. And that is with this composition, uh, unlike my previous version, darken the darks quite a bit in the shadows while holding a lot of the color and bringing a lot more focus to the central character here. So I could use this as a starting point for, uh, well, I guess, which would become a final painting if I wanted to move towards it. Pretty happy with how this turned out. Great one-point perspective. Uh, lots of color, lots of strong sunlight on the facade. And um, thanks for watching.